everybody. Welcome back to Daytime. Dr. Guy Bahar is back. He's the owner of the Posture Clinic. Welcome back to the show, my friend. Nice to be here. Thank you. A, a pleasure to have you here, especially because we're always talking about such important and relative issues that people might not be aware of. A uh, new survey came out. 26.8% of Canadians suffer from sleep apnea. How much of posture wow. plays a role in that study? Well, I actually came across this by accident. I was screening in a general vicinity. It was a community event, and I was uh, looking at so many people from broad spectrums, men, women, young, old, mm -hmm. and obviously I'm just looking at the overall posture. And the ones that had high incidences, really bad hunching, forward head, forward posture, head posture, really severe, they were all telling me, one after the other, that they had sleep apnea. They suffered from sleep apnea. And that was like 12 people in one in the course of one afternoon. And I'm mm -hmm. thinking, this is, can't be a coincidence. So I decided to look up the research on this, and this is how I came across it. For those who are wondering, what, what exactly classifies sleep apnea? Sleep apnea basically is classified in terms of the uh, amount of times that a person will, their sleep will, their breathing during their sleep will be either interrupted, pause or outright stopped and it's usually defined in terms of cycles in, a, in an hour mm -hmm. so a mild case you would actually stop about 10 times in an hour but severe cases anywhere from 30 to 50 times wow. I'm right. actually shocked even a mild case would be your heart stopping yeah. 10 times a, an hour not necessarily the heart it's just oh, okay. your airway your, your airway. airway so wow. you can't you're not huh. drawing in breath and over a ten, so they define it in a 10 second time frame no air is actually going through the trachea into the lungs now correct Gosh. me if I'm wrong but breathing probably an important part of life yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> when it comes to forward head posture for people at home who haven't seen one of our sites before, what exactly defines forward head posture? Okay, forward head posture is a, is a term that we're using to define a situation where where head is coming forward over the shoulders, mm -hmm. our shoulders tend to round down, our upper spine tends to round forward, and our chest tends to drop, and it actually will compress on the chest cavity. Okay, yeah. so there are some things that you can do in order to help with your sleep apnea if you are experiencing it, right? Yeah, and it that's right. it starts back with your posture. Correct. Well, right now, the current industry standard for sleep, po for, for sleep apnea mm -hmm. is the CPAP machine. And yeah. it's, quite yes. a, it's quite a big apparatus that people are forced to do. What they do is they, they check you into a sleep clinic. They run all these tests with you overnight where you're strapped to all these electrodes and they monitor how many times this happens. And if they classify you with sleep apnea, they'll send you home with this sleep CPAP machine and it's Let's quite, show it. I'll hold it up. Show doctor, the picture uh -huh. of the gentleman yeah. on it. So well, this just doesn't look no, it's not comfortable. like something you would like have to do for the rest of your life. No, exactly. And more importantly, it's much more uncomfortable for the spouse because the machine itself is very noisy. There's a lot of uh, reported incidences of people in the middle when they have an attack, they grab the mask and they pull it on. <laughs> so the it's wife is laughing. listening for the yeah. machine to go off. Yeah. She's nervous too. It's a, it's, it's a pretty stressful situation. Huh. And even though it works, I mean, I mean, the whole CPAP basically stands for continuous positive air pressure you're opening up the airway and forcing continuous air through so they don't so they're always in a position where they're going to be able to breathe the problem okay. is the compliance mm -hmm. they said they've done mm -hmm. another study 60 percent of the people don't even use it the machine itself yeah they so just they keep it, it in the, yeah. they keep it in their closet this is what somebody told me last huh. week she says oh i have three uh, friends that have uh, sleep apnea their machines they leave them in their closet all the time oh 60 percent don't use it so you're either not yeah. using the machine or this might just be going undiagnosed yes exactly and usually it requires either a spouse or somebody next to you to let you know <laughs> that something's not working right because a lot of people will yeah. not notice it how many people yeah. notice how bad they snore no. all right person next to them yeah exactly yeah. okay so, so take the cues from your yeah. from your partner then for sure yeah. What do you have in front of you in order to help with the forward head posture? We're looking at ways of uh, basically assisting with this in addition to a CPAP or if you're having difficulty with the compliance to use that. Now this may look like a pillow but actually what it is is a, a postural device that actually reverses the effects of the forward head posture. So you don't actually sleep on it but you merely lie on it for about 10 to 15 minutes and what it's doing is it has like a, uh, a pivoting uh, ridge over here that by lying backwards on will allow the head to come backwards and that's the biggest connection that we've found with forward head posture and sleep apnea. The mere shifting of the head forward actually is restricting, in a, in a reclined yeah. position, is actually restricting the upper airway. So you're losing mm. a lot of air. And some people who have mild cases, they don't 
stop breathing, but the breathing is much more shallower, yeah. so they're not rested enough. I imagine this falls hand in hand with stress, because I, I can imagine as we get more stressed out, we sort of hunch in more, yeah. and that's continuing to pull, and thus leading to sleep apnea as well. Exactly. So the stress levels, if you're not getting enough quality sleep, if your immune system's down, we're getting into flu season, all these sort of things are going to put you in a much more greater risk category. So we've come up with a device that we use actually in the office as well, and what it does is it allows to train the body to see what it feels like to have your shoulders pulled back, to have your head mm -hmm. recessed back, and really open up that airway. So, and this isn't something they sleep on, this is no. just something you do once a day? Yeah, like I said, as I said, but what I usually prescribe with it, I, initially I have them train on how to use it in the office, but once they're able to mm -hmm. take it home, they would use it 10, 15 minutes a day, best time at the end of the day. Yeah, so let's talk about someone at home who might suffer from sleep apnea, uh, and what kind of role you would play in their life. Well, basically what we do, if they're suspecting they would have it, the first thing we want to do is to make sure to get it checked out. So if that means yeah. going to a sleep clinic and doing so, you have to get it diagnosed because this is a serious situation. In some cases it can cause heart attacks and strokes, so some severity cases are there. If their forward head posture is extreme, like over 30 degree curve, mm -hmm. then they're probably already been prescribed a CPAP machine. What mm -hmm. we want to try to do from our end is we want to help reduce that curve as much as possible because by reducing that forward head curve, you're going to enable the airway to be much more open and not be so dependent on or having the same kind of dependency on the, this kind of machine. Who are you seeing that usually, what type of person is usually diagnosed with sleep there apnea? Is, are you that's a good kids? question. There is kids not so much, yeah. but there is definitely trends. Um, generally mm -hmm. men have it more than women. Okay. Um, obesity tends to be another factor too, as well as aging as well. So, And this is just because with the large stature, any kind of thing that's going to already put you at a risk of having respiratory uh, difficulties is going to further be exacerbated and they also tend to have a higher incidence of uh, the forward head posture too. Makes sense. As you get older you're going to see this too. Mm. Wow. Okay so is it I mean the first thing is to have a consultation right meet with somebody mm -hmm. and then figure out what the next steps are mm -hmm. get put on a plan what's the best way to contact you Dr. Bahar? Oh well, the posture clinic is in Richmond Hill and our, 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 we have a website uh, explains everything um, and uh, we're open during the week time and we see a lot of people this time of year yeah. coming up on flu season so we're going to oh, be yeah. having a, uh, a big uh, community event relating to that as well. Fantastic okay. and for all the details go to the website posture uh, postureclinic.ca we'll be right back with home for the holidays don't go anywhere